believe that Jesus is the Christ. We believe he's the Son of God. We believe he died on the cross. We believe he washed away our sins. We believe that he does miracles. We believe that he takes up his church. We believe that he's going to come again. We believe that we're going to go to heaven because of his blood. Amen. We need to confess what we believe. Praise the Lord. Amen. And if the more you confess it, the less the devil will have a hold on your life and a hold on your situation. Start confessing the gospel. Praise God. You know, uh, I just want to talk to you about something. And I don't know whether you have memories of the last conversation you had with somebody. You know, I've seen many people die, and, and uh, sometimes I've been with them in their deathbed. And... Um, and that we have a conversation, and I'll, I'll only see them again in heaven. I don't know whether that's ever happened to you, where you've spoken to somebody, but you haven't seen them, and they've gone to be with the Lord. Or... And um, during my time in this church, I've had many conversations with people before they passed away. And I remember I was... Um, I was told that there was someone from this church, I won't name them, and uh, they were in the Royal Hospital and they were dying. So I went down and I had the privilege, there was someone in the room with them, but when I came in, they left and I was able to have a private conversation with somebody. Now this person was a Frenchman and he... He uh, married a young English girl, and they came over here in the 1960s, and they had one son. But his wife died. I don't know whether it was cancer or something, but he died, she died, and as a young man, he had this little son. He only ever had one job. He worked in a French restaurant as a waiter. And um, then the 70s went past, and, and then the beginning of the 80s, his, his son joined the army, and he was killed in the Falklands War. So all he had was being a waiter in a French restaurant. And... Um, and then there was a takeover somewhere in the 90s. And uh, they didn't want the French restaurant anymore. They wanted to do something else. And it was a new owner. And they just got rid of him. And it was the only thing he knew. And it was the only thing he could do. And his life just went from rack and ruin. I actually went to visit him in, in his uh, flat and I have to say, it was the nearest thing to a vagrant's house that I've ever been in. He was living in terrible conditions. Anyway, he came to this church, and um, I had the privilege of seeing him on his deathbed. He was late 60s then. And he called me over. He said, I want to tell you something, Pastor. He said, I was walking past Jubilee Drive and I saw language school on the railings. And I came in and I found Jesus and God changed my life. He said, but what you don't know I was walking past the church to kill myself. He was about to commit suicide. He came down the stairs. He became part of the language school. And the Lord completely changed his life. What a what last. And then, of course, I prayed. Of course, I prayed for him to get better. 
Uh, but the Lord decided otherwise. He wanted him to be in a mansion in heaven. And that was the last conversation I had with him. And there have been many people like that. I want to talk to you about the last conversation Jesus had with his disciples. So let's read Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 19. It should go up on here. It does help people who can't understand English to be able to read it. So if you can get it up, that would be great. Mark 16, verse 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. For he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received into heaven, and he sat down on the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? This, these were the last, this was the last conversation on earth with Jesus. What a statement. And you'll find that this conversation is recorded in the book of Matthew, in the book of Mark, and in the book of Luke. And they were all written at different times by different people. And so their record is slightly different, but more or less the same. It's a little bit like uh, there's three reporters one from Sky News, one from BBC, and one from the Daily Telegraph. They're all telling the same story. They're all reporting the same conversation. But as we look, we'll see that they bring out different aspects of that last conversation with Jesus. Oh, man, wouldn't you have loved to have been there to hear Jesus on earth, in his last conversation, talking to his disciples, not just the 12, but we find out in the Acts of the Apostles, 500 people. Amen. Okay, so what was simple? What was, what was in the storyline of all the reports? Two things. Go public and be global. Go public and be global. You know, he didn't say to them, I just want you to do good things for people and show them. He didn't just say, show them. Of course, he had told them to do good things for people. But he said, go and declare. Amen. So you see, he didn't say, what's happening with our relationship and how God's moving is just a personal thing and you mustn't upset people by uh, presenting to them something personal because religion and the gospel is just a personal thing for you. No, he said, go public and tell them, praise God. You know, God wants you to be public. He doesn't want you to be embarrassed about who you are or what you believe. He wants you to be fearless. 
He wants you to be wise. He wants you to be sensitive. He wants you to be courageous. But he want, and he wants you to be full of faith, to accept, expect people to be saved, to be healed, and to be set free when you speak to them about Jesus. Amen. Now, a lot of people struggle. They love the Lord, but they don't want to, um, they don't want to talk about what God's doing in their lives or what's happening. And it's for different reasons. For, most, for many people, it's fear. It's fear. You're afraid of the face of man. You're afraid that you'll be rejected. You'll, fra- you'll be afraid that you won't be received. You'll be a- a- afraid of... A- a- but you know, if you are manipulated by what other people say and what other people think, then you will be manipulated into their mold. God has to deal with the spirit of fear in us to be able to tell them uh, about Jesus. And then the other people uh, don't, don't speak about God because they don't know what to say. They're not quite sure how to put things across. And then there are other people that are just shy. It wouldn't matter if you were talking about, um, you know, if someone said, will you go and sell Maltesers on the door? You'd still struggle. There's some people who actually don't like talking to people. And there are some people who don't know how to talk to people. And so, you know, if you're shy and you don't interact or or you don't know, or you're just unfriendly. Some people are just unfriendly people. You don't talk to anybody. I think of Scrooge in Christmas Carol. You know what I mean? So this two things has to happen. You, to deal with the fear factor, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Unless you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will always suffer from the fear of man. And if you struggle in the area of talking to people, or for one reason or another, the Holy Spirit can baptize you and shed abroad the love of God in your heart by the Holy Spirit. Now, if God fills you with the Holy Spirit, you'll find, one, you'll have courage. And number two, uh, you'll find it easier to talk to people because he'll shed the love of God in your heart abroad by the Holy Spirit. And there's a lot of wonderful Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit, but they're not able to talk to people in the right way because their their religion and their relationship with God centers around themselves. But there is a baptism of love that comes from the Holy Spirit where the love of God is shed abroad in your heart for people. Now, when that happens, you won't have a problem be with clicks. A lot of people talk to people, but they only talk to people like them. They only talk to people that are of certain education. They only talk to people of a certain class. They only talk to people, uh, but, and this, they don't want to be talking to people who are a pest or a difficult or have problems. They just want to talk to people who've got it all together in, and, 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 and you can communicate well with. They, but, you know, when the love of God fills your heart, you can, you can talk to a prince and you can talk to a pauper. You can talk to somebody who is mentally struggling and is a, a, a difficult person to relate to. And you can talk to people who, who's really, you know, got five, five degrees. 
You know, if you're a working class socialist, you might struggle to talk to rich people. You need the love of God in your heart to love rich people. And if you're from a middle class background and you don't want to be associating with these difficult people, you need the love of God in your heart to wash away that prejudice or your own race. I only want to be with my own race. Well, you need the love of God to be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. So if you're a black person, you love white people. And if you're a white person, you love black people. There's no room for hate. So before we even talk about the message, God equips the vessel. Amen? Now this falls into the other thing that comes across in every report, that you've got to go global. You know, they talk about globalists, don't they? Well, I tell you, the, the people of God are the biggest globalists on the planet. We were told to go global. Every race, every color, every tribe, every language, every age, everyone. Amen. Go and tell everyone everywhere. Starting with where you live. Amen. Don't be trying to go to China. You know, someone said in, you know, the old uh, missionaries that went to China, I think it was Hudson Taylor, one of the leaders of the greatest missionary societies in China. I think it was him who said this. Don't be taking a lamp to China that's not burning a home. If you can't tell, Mabel next door, you're not going to tell Sanyita in India. Flesh out this command where you live. I remember Billy Graham, first seeing Billy Graham, I was 21. I was in a youth meeting, a big youth meeting, and he walked through the door. I'll never forget what he said. There's a reason that God caused you to be born in England. And I thought, yeah, because I thought you only got called with the gospel if you were sent somewhere abroad. But you're here. Maybe you've just come. But while you're here, tell everybody. Amen. But don't, a lot of people, if they're as fruitless in China as they're fruitless here. But you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and you need to be filled with the, with the love of God. The love of God has got to be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit. So that when you're talking to people, they feel loved by God. Amen? Even if they, you're saying stuff that they don't agree with, they still feel loved by God. Amen. Okay. Now, it's interesting on the three reports, uh, interesting on John, in John's gospel, he doesn't report the last conversation. Matthew, Mark, and Luke do. So I'm going to, but they all say slightly different things. So between the three of them, we can get an idea of everything Jesus said. Amen. Hands up if you'd like to know what everything Jesus said. Some of you are not so sure. Okay. Let's look at the first one. Luke 24, verses 46 to 47. He said to them, it is written, it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness, in the AV it's remission, what it means is forgiveness of sins, should be preached in his name to all nations beginning, of his sin, beginning at 
Jerusalem, where you live. Amen. <laughs> okay. So, you see, when we, when we are talking to people and we want to see God move, we're not commanded to talk to them about our denomination. Now, there's nothing wrong in speaking about I go to City Church and it's a great place. And it can be helpful because you need to bring them into the community of God. But if your message is your denomination, there's something wrong. There's nothing wrong talking about um, ethics, abortion, um, euthanasia. food banks, poverty. You know, it's nothing wrong in talking about that, but we are not called to go into all the world to talk about ethics. We're not called into the world to talk about politics. Now, there's nothing wrong in saying, well, I think that this person... Uh, who's up for election, is being sent by God to this city. There's nothing wrong in saying that. And the, the people might disagree with you. There's nothing wrong. But we are not to be people whose mainstream message is political. Or we're not called to, pick, to talk primarily about our pet doctrine. I don't know, it might be finance, it might be prosperity, it might be uh, the structure of the church, it might be the deeper meanings of the Jewish context of Scripture. That's not what we're commanded to do. There's nothing wrong in talking about it. I spoke this last two weeks on the power of the tongue. Nothing wrong in doing that. In fact, it's good to talk about some of these things. But our mainstream message has to be this. And this is very rarely, pre this is very rarely talked about on a week-by-week -week basis. It might be unfair, but you, we've got to start talking, telling people that God can forgive their sins, wash away their sins. Now, it's no use talking about, did God make the world in 6,000 years or 60 million years? You know, you can have a conversation with somebody and you're talking about, did God sit, make the world in six days, six years, or six million years? And you think, oh, I had a great time witnessing. You're not called to talk about that. You're called to say, you know what? God can wash away your sin. Amen. He's not telling you to go into all the world and talk about this, that, and the other. He's telling you to go into all the world and tell people that God can wash away your sin. God can change your life. God can give you a new start. God can remove guilt out of your life. Everything that's been messed up in your life can be restored by Jesus. Amen. So when you're in a conversation with somebody and they, they kick off with, um, I, don't, I, don't, I, I, I don't think we should be taking the vaccine. Don't get into it. Just say, well, I'd like to tell you about this. Amen. And talk about the other later. I want to tell you about this. Jesus died on the cross, and do you know what? He can wash away your sin. Someone said, oh, well, I was second coming or whatever. I, is he coming 
before, after, then, or this. You say, yeah, well, I'm still working on that. But you know what I can tell you is this. Jesus washes away our sin. Jesus can forgive you for your sin. Jesus can change your life. Jesus can make all the damage, remove all the damage. Jesus can give you a new start. Jesus has got a new plan for your life. That's the gospel. And until you start having conversations like that, you're not going to see people saved, healed, delivered, or transformed. Amen. That's what he told them to do. Just tell them about repentance, what he's talking about there. That God can turn your life around 180 degrees. They know, most people know. Do you know what? Uh, the way my life's been going, I I'm, I'm seem to go beyond course for hell. Well, you can tell them, you know what? If you ask Jesus to come into your life, he can turn it right round so everything that was being destroyed can be rebuilt. You just tell them that. Don't you... Use your, take your energy and use all the stuff. Obviously, answer people's questions if, they are, if you can. But really, just, uh, just say, I can talk to you a bit more about that. But this is the starting point. Amen. This is what we were told to do. This is why churches don't see people saved, healed, or delivered. Because this isn't their primary message. Now, there is a place. Let's have a look at uh, the next passage, which is very interesting. Matthew, he's reporting on the last conversation. Matthew 28, verses 18 and 19. Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So in this conversation, wasn't just God wants to wash away your sin. It wasn't just repentance. He said, go into all the world and disciple. Teach. Equip. Develop. Model. You, you see this in the con last conversation that the Gospel of John records. His last conversation that John records is by the Lake Galilee, where they'd fished all night and caught nothing, which I spoke on last week. What I didn't tell you is what Jesus actually said to them. What he said to Peter was this, feed my sheep. Tend my lambs. Amen. So, some of us will be called to feed the flock of God. Now, in that teaching, or bigger issues might be discussed. Because God doesn't just want to save people. He wants to transform people. Amen? And you need to come to where the community of God is and feed on the word. You know, these, these, these Bible studies we're having about the Acts of the Apostles. I don't know what about you, but I'd like a church that looks like the one that was in the Acts of the Apostles, wouldn't you? How many people would like to go to a church like that one? With 3,000 people got saved in one day. I don't know what we'd do here. We'd have to have an open-air meeting, I think. I just want to pick up in this because 
I think Mark is my favorite report, okay? Out of the reporters reporting the last conversation, this is the favorite one that I like. Because it fits with my gift mix. This fits with my gift mix. So I, I like this one. Um, Mark 16, 15 to 18. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they'll cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Amen. Go into all the world and preach. This is slightly different um, to Matthew, who says go into the world and make disciples. He's saying preach. What does he mean by this? Declare things. Declare things. Amen. You see, you've not only got to tell people, you've got to declare things. Christian. We've got to stop declaring things. If you're counseling somebody, if you're a natural counselor, there's a thing called non-directive counseling and directive counseling. Well, Christian counseling is directive counseling. It's actually saying there is, a, there is an answer to this, and it's this. Uh, in the world, they have non-directive counseling. It's, it, I'm not... I'm not uh, knocking it down but it goes like this how do you feel about that what do you think about that perhaps you should consider this perhaps you should consider that these are the options open to you we've found this there's nothing wrong with that type of counseling but the counseling in 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 the bible is this the bible says this Jesus wants to do this. Will you let him do that? Amen. Do you see the difference? And I want to tell you that um, an extension, well, we're not only to just counsel people and tell them, we are to declare things over people. Declare things over people. If you'd have been at the Bible study last night, on Wednesday, you would realize that we were declaring good things over one another. I declare fruitfulness over you. I declare fruitfulness over you. And that fruit will remain. Amen. I declare, declare healing over you. I declare deliverance over you. Declare, preach. That's what it means. Declaring things. Declaring good things. Declaring good news over people. I declare a job for you. Go into all the world and speak good things over people. Speak good news over people. I'm not so sure whether he you've got the authority to declare that Liverpool are going to win the league. Well, God, the Holy Spirit put things in you and you've got to declare it. I declare Kensington belongs to the Lord. Amen. I declare my children will not be held by the devil, but they be released to the kingdom of God. Amen. Preach. Declare. You can declare it with a loud voice. You know, there, there were people in the Bible who declared things with a loud voice, and they were called heralds. Amen. And the hark, the herald, angels sing glory to the newborn king. I'm all right doing this because I've got this in front of me. Okay. So. Amen. Declare things. 
preach the gospel to every creature, every creature. Children, women, men, families, white people, black people, Chinese people, every race, every language, South American people, better not leave you out. Amen. Declare it. And every people group on the face of the earth, they're all of the same blood. They're all of the same humanity. They're all of the same value. Amen. All made in the image of God. Isn't that wonderful? This is the church. This is the church. If you want to see cosmopolitan humanity working, look at the church. Amen. This is where it all comes together in Christ. And it cannot come together any other way. Amen. Every creature. You know, if you were a Jew, this is, goes against Judaism. Judaism says God is only for Jewish people. Maybe Samaritans, maybe, definitely not women, only men, and only men. You can only be a priest if you're over 30. Islam's very similar. That was the Old Testament. But in the New Testament and in the gospel and in Jesus, God uses women, he uses children, he uses every race, every gender. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You say, well, I'm only three. God can't use me while I'm three. Try telling that to the prophet Samuel. I'm only eight. Try telling that to the prophet Jeremiah. I'm 80. Try telling that to Moses. I'm a woman. Try telling that to Lydia. Or the woman of Samaria. Or the women that financed Jesus' ministry. Or Mary Magdalene. Amen. But I, I, I'm not British. Try telling that. To Simon of Cyrene. But I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm a Gentile. By telling that to Cornelius. The disciples couldn't get their head around everybody, particularly Peter. Until God gave him a vision and put the love of God that shed abroad in his heart by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, the interesting thing about this is Mark is different to Matthew and Luke. And he picks out these. He says, there's going to be, apparently Jesus in his last conversation said, if you do, do declare the forgiveness of sins and, and preach it, and make, try and make disciples, there's a spin-off. Things will happen. You'll start to see visible power manifest when you preach the forgiveness of sins and repentance. 
This is what happens. Demons will come off people. You, you're not talking about demons. You're talking about Jesus setting people free and changing their lives. And things will come off people. If they're clairvoyance in Ephesus, demons will come off people. Things will come off people. If they're blind with a critical spirit and they just can't get their head around and they have problems in the thing, things will come off people. If they're struggling with their gender, things will come off people so they'll stop troubling, being troubled, and then you could get into trouble for conversion therapy. But just keep stuck on Jesus washes away the sins. Don't get into the thing. Amen? But don't be surprised. Things will come off people. Cast out devils. We've got to be very careful in our politically correct society. We've got to have real wisdom. But I, I, I've, I've commanded a spirit of death to come off people. Spirit of infirmity to come off people. Spirit of poverty to come off people. Amen. This gospel's powerful. That's what Mark's saying. It's powerful. Jesus said it's powerful. When you preach the forgiveness of sins and repentance, things are going to come off people. And then he says, and you'll speak in new tongues. Foreign languages. I've told you about my friend who's on the, with her other friend. She's still alive now. She must be about 80, 90. She's a young nurse. And her friend looks as if she's dying. So we, and it, she's almost going delirious. So she starts speaking in tongues. The woman who's dying flicks up in bed and looks at her and says, Helen, did you realize what you just said to me? She didn't have a clue. She's just speaking in tongues. She doesn't know what she's saying. Well, she said, Helen, I'm Welsh. You've just told me in perfect Welsh that I need to sort my life out before God. She's instantly healed. New tongues. These things happen when we preach the gospel. Take up serpents. Well, Kathy gave a testimony or, or was speaking to someone recently. She got a testimony about snakes. But let me tell you this testimony in the same house. We came over here for uh, furlough. Furlough for missionary means basically come home and go around and tell everyone what you're doing. And we came home and my friend from Ireland, um, Joe, took over our house. Now our house is full of snakes. And he, he told me once when we were back in Ireland, he said, do you know what? I was in your bed, he said. And I'll just tell you this, he said, I jumped out. I jumped out of bed early in the morning. And I stood on a snake. And guess what? It didn't hurt him. Just slithered away. And they drink any deadly thing. We were in Malawi. We were in um, Kenya, in Mombasa, in the middle of nowhere. 
There's mosquitoes everywhere. The water was... Mm -mm -mm -mm. We were there for six to eight weeks. The next group that went to that very village, some of them died because the water was poisonous. But the Lord kept us. Amen. Now don't go drinking poison. Don't look round for snakes to jump on. That is tempting God. But what I'm saying is, if you preach the gospel, if you carry this message, miracles will break out right, left, and center. And then it says, you'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. You know, when we preach the gospel, we've got to say to people, look, how are, you, uh, how are you getting on? And if they say, you know what, I've had a, I've, I'm always falling over or I, I've got this twisted arm or I, I, I suffer with this particular disease, don't just leave it like that. Just say, well, you know, God loves you. Do you mind if I pray for you for it to be healed? Start putting into practice, not only telling about remission of sins, but asking to people, would you like me to pray for you? I was, a, I was on Kensington Road, and I met this person by the shops. I don't think, they, they were just in the shop or something, and said they, to me, oh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm can, I've got cancer, I'm dying. So I said, I'm going to pray for you to get better. He said, are you? I said, yeah. And uh, I never saw him again for about uh, two years. And he turned up. I met him again on the road. And I said, how, did you, how are you getting on? I thought, it, it, I was the cancer. And he looked at me. And he said... I'm better. Oh, you prayed for me, didn't you? <laughs> He's given me a good telling off, as if to say, didn't you believe that you was going to get healed? I'd like to see him come here. Amen. But just pray for people. Just say, look, like, can I pray for you? And just say, Lord, just take this away. Amen. Don't give a big sermon in your prayer. Lord Jesus, in your name, just make him better. If he's crippled, Lord, do we just, do we just heal this body of affliction and let raise him up? Amen. So this is the message. Isn't it wonderful? I want to ask, finish by saying this. Do you need to know that Jesus has washed away your sin? That... Do you need to know that Jesus is going to turn your right life around 180 degrees and rebuild your life? Do you need to know that if you're sick, Jesus can heal you? Is there something bearing down on you that you just can't shake off? Do you know that? In Jesus, there's freedom, and who the Lord sets free will be free indeed. You might have a snake biting at your heels, not, not literally, but something that is like afflicting you all the time. Jesus can cut off its head. You might have been fed poison of bitterness, and drinking from the, uh, the, the well of disappointment. And it's damaged your soul. Well, Jesus can pour in living water into your spirit. And give you a clear heart. Let's pray. Father, we just love you. And we thank you. That you died on the cross for us. We ask you to be our saviour. Some of us, Lord, need you to save us from the consequences of our sin, and we need you to wash it away. 
Some of us need you to turn our life around 180 degrees from the path of destruction to the path of eternal life. Some of us, Lord, need you to heal our bodies. And some of us, Lord, need you to purify our spirit. And some of us need you to heal our wounded mind. And some of us need you to release us from things that are bearing down on us and destroying us. Lift your hands to God. Can you lift your hand to God like that? Say this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I thank you that you died on the cross, that you are my saviour, I open my life to you. I ask the power of the gospel will go right through my life and let me be a carrier of the good news to everybody in my country and all the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing our last song. And it's a song where we just love the Lord. And you know, he who has been delivered from most, it says loves the most. Amen. So count your blessings as you worship the Lord with this song. And let's give him thanks. Shall we stand? Let's stand, shall we? As you go out uh, after this, there's, um, the offering baskets are, are on the end of the rows if you would like to give.